welcome to Albert Park where I spend most of my Wednesdays entering their pool and going for a swim and also doing deep water running. Just watch your head because we're quite tall. <laughs> Here, but for the best kind of coffee, everyone needs. Gotta make sure our hair's done in the morning. Yes! <laughs> Hello everyone, it is um, Wednesday morning here in lovely Paran. Um, just made myself a fantastic coffee thanks to Steph and Chris's coffee machine. I'm actually living in their house while Steph is in Adelaide. Also, if you are watching this Steph, we've kept the apartment very clean so you should be very happy with us. If a lot of you people have been watching my journey, you would understand that I've been missing for about a year. Um, if you haven't and you're just new to this and you actually don't even know who I am, I'm Sarah Kirsty Blitzars. Um, play for the Jayco Rangers, as you can see, Ranger Danger. Um, and I'm kind of coming to you as a more serious Sarah, which is very rare, very, very rare. So we've got our St. Ali beans. Is that right, Chris? Mm -hmm. St. Ali beans, always a good choice. And according to Chris, you're supposed to just put it down so it's quite even. Don't push too hard, but push a little bit hard. So. I think everyone needs a little bit of a kind of serious side. Only a little bit though, like 10%, that's it. Back in November, it was a Friday night on the 10th, and we were playing Adelaide Lightning. And right before half time, I went over on my knee. I just went up for a layup, ended up ruining it, and I've been out for about 10 and a half months. And it's funny when you think of injuries, a, a lot of the time they're very insignificant, but this one, obviously, because it's so major, has stuck with me. And um, just it, the whole day, I just, I can remember the whole day so clearly. I can remember the game day, I remember how I was feeling coming into the game. Um, I remember exactly the layup. I remember how it happened. I remember the pain. I still remember the pain. Um, yeah, and then I guess just the whole thought process afterwards, it was just horrible. I'd been struggling to find my groove, I guess that whole season, you know? I, I was doing well, but I wasn't playing like myself and I was very much overthinking everything. And when you get caught in your brain, it's not a good thing. I Remember that game, I just thought, screw it. I'm just gonna go for it this game. Stop worrying, stop overthinking, just play. And it actually kind of came back to me, which was really good. I remember when I got the ball, it was kind of like a coast to coast. I was on a full court layup and a girl came across the key as I was about to shoot. And when I do my layups, obviously I'm very right hand dominant. Um, and when I do my layups, I really push off my legs to go into a player. I like to use players' bodies um, to finish my layup. And basically I just planted my right leg. My foot was slightly out more. So obviously my brain wasn't connected to my body and um, I hyperextended, dislocated my knee. And that caused, this is what my surgeon went through. That caused a ACL rupture and then it caused a meniscus, the meniscus root, sorry, to tear off the bone. And then it caused a fracture as well. So it just kind of went crunch. Horrible pain. If anyone's done an ACL out there, an ACL out there, um, they will understand what the pain's like. In saying that, I think the fracture of the ripped meniscus root too didn't help. Um, and yeah, I just, I remember hopping around for about 10 seconds thinking, don't be weak, Sarah, you're fine. One thing I cannot stand is people who 
go down and stay down and then come back out and play. So I was hopping around before I decided to lie down on the ground because I didn't want to look weak or anything. I remember my physio running over to me and she just wanted me to get my legs straight and I slapped her hand away and I was like, don't touch it. I just wanted to sit there forever, honestly. It was so painful, but I basically went into the change rooms and then found out that week or the next day, sorry, that I'd ruptured my ACL and I did all this other stuff. And then I had surgery on Monday, got that done. Um, and then since then, I've managed to have two more surgeries. I know, pretty good, right? A torn meniscus in Feb, and then I had more cartilage damage, all due to the original injury. Um, and I had to get that done in June, this third one. So, yeah, look, it's not been coming along great, or as I hoped, but you can speak to anyone that's ever done an ACL and they tell you that, um, oh gosh, sorry, I lost my train of thought, hold on. They say that uh, you're always guaranteed setbacks no matter what, so I remember Larissa telling me that. Um, I guess I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the mindset of injuries and, and what I did to stay so positive and so confident because Incredibly enough, even though I've had six terrible times during my rehab where I literally, the th sorry, not I literally, the thought of me giving up did cross my mind. Um, I just want to, yeah, I'm still positive and confident and, you know, I guess I just want to tell you a little bit about how I did that. Firstly, the biggest thing for me and the thing that I'm most grateful for is... Um, I had, oh my God, I feel like I'm getting proud. <laughs> Sorry. <sighs> okay, if you know me, I don't cry either. So this is so rare, I'm not crying anyway. Just like a little watery eyes. Um, I had people that were really realistic in my recovery. So I remember when I first did it, my dad, um, he told me that night as he drove me home so I was obviously, I was saying to dad, no, 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 dad, it's just a dislocation. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. And then he was like, Sarah, I'm not going to lie. You've done your ACL. Okay. You should be expecting that. And I know it's brutal to hear from the get go. And I know people treat these circumstances differently, but, um, I think him telling me that even though I was telling him, no, it's a dislocation, it made me I guess have the thought and deep down inside I understood that it was um, an ACL and worse than what it was. So even though it sucks hearing that, I'm thankful that he prepared me for the worst and that's what happened, you know. Alongside that, um, my physio Megan has always been super realistic with my recovery um even though it's brutal and i just want some good news from her <laughs> sorry megan um it's it is good in a way for her to be like sarah i think worlds are off the cards you know because obviously a goal of mine was to try and make worlds this year and she was like i just don't think it can be done you know not in those words sorry that sounds bad but secondly i took so much good from the situation because it's such a negative situation it's such a negative thing to happen that people just focus on the negatives non-stop and when you start focusing on the negatives then you just lose your confidence you start going down you're upset all the time it's just not healthy for you so a big thing for me right is my strength work has never been key in my development i guess i've always done it but I've never pushed it, I've never pushed the limits, and I don't think I totally understood how good strength and conditioning is. Maybe not conditioning, but strength is. <laughs> and I really bought into gym, bought into the gym this year. And coming from that, my quads are stronger, my hamstrings are stronger, my calves are stronger. If anyone's noticed my shoulders, I'm bloody like Dwight Howard at the moment. Um, and already just from focusing on gym, I've now managed to play lower to the ground. Well, I haven't played yet, but trained, uh, lower to the ground, which means my whole game's going to be changed. My shot has improved. I think 
by 20% just because I'm naturally lower to the ground now because I'm stronger. Three pointers are easy for me to make the distance, not so much the consistency of the shot, but as in it's not an effort shot for me anymore. Where before my ACL, three pointers were an effort shot. So the fact that I've been able to change my whole shot, I've been able to focus on my body and my strength, and honestly sitting out for a while i think can do you a whole lot of good mentally to kind of remove yourself from the game for a chunk of time women obviously especially we, we don't have an off season really we go wbl seaball or wbl wba or wba europe all year round we don't have that mental break from the game and the fact that I could actually take the first three months off, I went on a few holidays and removed myself from the game. I mean, not even enter a court for, th I think like three months I didn't even enter a court. So I didn't even, th the smell, this is going to sound ridiculous, but the smell of basketball, that like dirty and basketball smell, I didn't even have that, you know? It's just a nice kind of cleanse and it was very refreshing to kind of be away for that long. Um, and I think mentally it helps you when you come back to then focus more on plays and people playing and the game and the knowledge behind it. And I feel like I've become smarter now just from sitting on the sidelines and watching my team train. Um, I've learned slash learning to speak up more and not worry if it's wrong because you know coaches are there to help you out with that stuff but hi coaches give us a wave what are we doing today laurie oh i'm so excited about this two and a half hour drive up to shep <laughs> so excited <laughs> what tunes are you gonna play oh. john denver <laughs> um hmm. kenny g yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, right, yeah. Just get us in, get us in, you know, relaxed and ready for the game. Yep, yeah, nice. Good job, guys. Yeah. Enjoy your trip. Thanks. <laughs> Sorry, guys. This is a long time talking, so <laughs> might just have a nap for a bit, actually. <laughs> anyway, this season, I'm going to talk a bit about season. So, our team's relatively the same. We've got a few additions with uh, Coley, Rachel, Jerry, Steph Reed from college. But other than that, it's um, basically the same. And we went on a huge team bonding session up at Mitchelton Wines, thanks to Jerry Ryan. Um, and the fact that we could connect and bond and instantly all of us became great friends and the chemistry in our team is incredible. And it's really showing on court at the moment. And the fact that this is the biggest thing too, Everyone is excited to come to training and wants to come to training. I think it's massive and you can just see it. Like we're all enjoying each other's company. We're all pushing each other. We're motivating each other and it's just such a nice feel to be a part of. Um, that and the range of support staff, we're all, as cliche as it sounds, getting to be one big family and it's such a nice feel and when you can have trust in somebody else, I think it really shows. And um, I think this season's going to be a really good one for us. Um, we're definitely going to push teams. We're feisty. We're aggressive. We have that little bit of bitch about us, um, which every team needs. And we have fun doing it. And I think that's going to be the thing that gets us over the line. The fact that we all get on so well and we want to win for each other and want to win for the coach and... Yeah, I think uh, our teams, we're going pretty well this year. So we've only had two practice games, but we've got more coming up. So yeah, I'm looking forward to getting back out there and playing as well. So <laughs> hopefully I don't ruin the chemistry. <laughs> when I come back, I'm going to be a bit nervous, obviously. I don't, I know this will shock some people, but I don't actually like the attention all on me and i'm just a bit nervous that when i come back it's going to be oh sarah's come back and let's make a fuss of sarah and i'd much rather just ignore me completely don't even say oh how are you feeling about your first game back just let me play you know 
Um, in saying that, I'll probably only get five to 10 minutes because that's as much as we're allowed to play. So I don't know what I'll be doing that five to 10 minutes. Getting rebounds. <laughs> but yeah, it's I'm so goddamn excited. And I think the biggest thing with me is like my confidence is still there. Even though I've been through so many crappy times, my confidence is still there. And I think it's just because I'm excited to get back out on court. So with ACLs, you have to do this test regularly to see if you, and if you pass it, then you can play. And it's a mental test. It's about, it's called the Coos test or something. And they ask you questions like, right now, how are you feeling if you were to play? When you get back out there, are you scared of redoing your knee? Um, what do you think the chances are of you redoing your knee? Stuff like that, right? And all of mine have been really high, as in, in a good way, like high is better. And I literally think it's just because I'm so excited to play. And so me being excited means my confidence is still here. I'm going to be nervous. I'm, I'm nervous I'm going to be rusty. But, you know, I just, oh, I cannot wait to get back out there. I can't sit down for more than five minutes, which is shocking because I have sat down now for about 10 minutes talking to a camera. But... <laughs> yeah I'm really keen so I can't wait honestly and I think I'm going to just sum it up there I'm going to think I'm just going to finish it up not sum it up I, I can't even talk anymore yeah thank you for tuning in guys I hope I can shed some light on a negative situation I hope you can take some good out of this and I hope I didn't ramble too much but uh, both Chris and I Chris my brother we call my mum Karen Rambles Blitzards because <laughs> she um, doesn't know when to hang up the phone. So I feel like I'm kind of inheriting that trait right now of rambling. So I'm probably going to go. <laughs> anyway, thanks for tuning in, everyone. And um, I'll see you around the stadium. Feel free to say hi to me um, and come up and talk to me. A lot of people have already and said how much they... Um, but like all have given me their well wishes and how much they've enjoyed my blog as well, which is cool. So, yeah, I'm always up for a chat. I like to consider myself quite friendly, so please don't be scared of me. Um, I know I'm tall and have massive shoulders, but <laughs> anyway, um, have a wonderful week, guys, and I'll catch up with you later. Can you just explain to the fans what you are, are up to right now? I have a torture device that has spikes on it, and you put it into your skin. Oh! And you're <laughs> brutal. <laughs> oh! That is not for children. Brutal.